Hey, what's going on? So, today I have a few things I want to talk about. It's going to be something casual. Definitely some things I want to touch base on uh, in terms of everything. Because <laughs> I think a lot of people could relate to this and the frustrations that uh, have come about because of the situation. But first thing I want to talk about, I finally got new stickers for the car. You know, on the SHO and on the Cobra here I have the handles for my pages, but finally got them for the new car in the same font as the logo. So that is awesome, that is cool. Coming up in the world, but stupid me not paying attention as I normally do, or don't do. This one is set right, minus the bubbles in this one. I'm gonna have to get these again and, and redo it. And I put this one up higher because I'm an idiot. So that really bugs me. But at least for now, to get me through, uh, they're on, people know who I am when they see this car. So, so there's a lot of shows and stuff coming up that, uh, you know, I'd like people to know who I am. Not to say that they care, but I care that they should know. And with that comes one more thing before we get in the car. And that's this right here. Well, not my plate, so don't worry about my license plate number, but you want to worry about the thing going around it. Now, I've kept this on. I normally do not keep dealer plate frames on, but I kept this on because I was very happy with the process here at Apple Ford and uh, Columbia, Maryland. And I kept this on that way, you know, it just kind of gives them a little bit of free advertisement, the intention of these plate frames. And uh, I was gonna rock it for a little while until I got something nicer to go around it. And that nicer thing is where part of this, the important part of this video comes in. So let's get in the car and uh, let's talk about what that nice plate frame is and why I don't have it. Ah, yes. All right, Kirk, so what's going on today? Well, let me tell you, I am extremely frustrated. I mean, like, ah, like I just had to get that out of there. I'm sorry. If that was too loud, I'll try to edit that audio if it's a little too on the on the ridiculous side. But that's just how I feel because I'm rocking the Apple Ford plate frame. But I want to get something a little bit nicer, you know, to match the overall theme of what the car is going to kind of come to be. And so I actually I ordered an actual carbon fiber uh, constructed plate frame off eBay and it was supposed to be shipping from California. Okay, well, it apparently left California and now it's somewhere in the abyss of the United States. I have no clue where. It was supposed to arrive uh, last Saturday. That was like its expected delivery date. Um, and we're now here approaching the Saturday after, you know, it's, Two more days and it'll be a whole full week past its delivery point and it's not here. And a lot of that is because it's being shipped through USPS and right now USPS is just, I don't know. It's very frustrating to be waiting for something that you spent money on and it not coming. I've already, in, in, in terms of eBay purchases, cause I do, I do a lot of I do a lot more buying on eBay than I do selling for obvious reasons. But with purchasing a lot of stuff on eBay, most of the sellers, and just because I sell on eBay, I understand why, you know, there there is a huge um, discount for sellers shipping through USPS versus UPS or FedEx or whatever. It's more appealing to the seller to save, you know, a few bucks you know, they're trying to make the most money they can as a business, you know, so they're gonna do everything they can to do it. But by picking USPS, it's just not fair to the customer right now because of how things have been with shipping. And sadly, even the other uh, carriers like UPS and FedEx and all them, they have, you know, been lacking too on just everything and it's just it's frustrating it really is you know i really was not a, a fan of buying things online um to begin with but as a car enthusiast you know unfortunately a lot of parts can only be found 
online because the businesses that sell them aren't local or they're not nearby where I can go drive and pick the part up. So I have to support their business by buying, ordering online and relying on a package carrier to deliver my part. So that sucks because we as car enthusiasts are pretty much like all now like we're completely just in the water when it comes to buying parts and waiting for them there's only been a couple things that i've ordered in the last uh month or so that has actually came in on time and you know and that's that's through all the different carriers like i was actually quite surprised by that because of how everything has been but it's just, it's really frustrating, you know? And I get it, it's just a plate frame. I didn't pay all that much money for it compared to other things that I have bought. But the point is that, you know, when you buy something, you spend your hard earned money for it, and then you get excited because you expect it to be, you know, delivered and it's not. It's really frustrating. Oh yeah, see, that's good. That's good stuff right there. Oh. Okay, come on. You have the right of way, buddy. So back to the shipping stuff. Yeah, you know, thankfully, I there hasn't been anything I had to order that like I desperately need. Uh, you know, for the cars, like if something broke and like the only way I could get it is through ordering it online. You know, thankfully I haven't had to do that because I would never get it. Like if I wanted to. Like, let's say I wanted to take the Cobra to a car show, but something broke, and, you know, I had to buy a part online and wait for it. If it was late, obviously, I wouldn't be taking the Mustang or the Cobra to the car show. And I know, I get it. First world problems, but these were not problems we've had before. And I still just find, you know, there's just so much to it that me and many other people would agree that it's just complete bogus BS. I feel a lot of this is just, un, you know, I think a lot of it was self-created. You know, there was just a lot of really dumb things that happened over the past year and a half that I just, to this day, cannot wrap my mind around it. Like how this stuff can happen, but this is where we are and this is what we're dealing with and it no, it doesn't make it any less frustrating at all and even to make matters worse one of the local businesses i love to support is maryland performance they have access to pretty much um most of the major brands almost any part you want you know there are there are a, a pretty much full rounded vendor when it comes to parts you want it they can usually get it because they're a business generally they can get parts direct from the warehouse in a day or two you know depending on the part sometimes three to four days and you know they're not going to charge you the customer extra for it which is nice it was and it's a nice perk you know to go to them and purchase a part but sadly even they have been affected by all this between the shortages on on things you know businesses not being able to keep up with manufacturing demands and you know there's just a shortage on everything you know if going there and buying something is just you know is just as much of a crapshoot because they might not even be able to get it at all you know that's the sad thing because you know i guess maybe certain manufacturers reserve you know what they have so they can meet online demands and not sell directly to businesses or vendors i don't know how that works but it seems that they are unable to get things but i can still find it online so it's just so frustrating right now, you know, to be a car enthusiast. Well, I mean, to be anyone really, but specifically speaking for a car enthusiast and, you know, try to buy parts for your car, no matter what it is, big, small, important or non-important. It's just become a pain right now. Oh, much like people who like to do less than the speed limit in the left lane. Oh, come on, buddy. Uh, oh, now you speed up because everyone's passing you? Yeah, that's a good indication you're not doing what you should be doing. Anyway, I just thought that would be something I would touch base in this video. You know, I'm sure there are a lot of other people, you know, 
frustrated just as much as me is not if not more because they are waiting for parts that they need to fix their project finish their project something and you know i'm just waiting for a, a carbon fiber plate frame regardless right now you know i really am refusing to purchase anything online because of this you know this is not the first time i've had this issue um in in recent times and holy crap look at this thing oh man hold on i'll see if i can pull the gopro off here look at this oh this thing is cool dude look at that that is awesome that is what i need for a daily around here man oh that is sweet go ahead cut me off i dare you okay uh, i'm not sure what this truck is doing but it's kind of messing me up because he does not belong in the left lane technically speaking and uh you don't know if he wants to be in that lane the middle lane or any other lane but it's kind of tying up the traffic here I get it when it comes to truck drivers. My father is a truck driver. He's been a truck driver for that, pretty much all of my life that I've, you know, known him. So I understand his frustrations, and, and especially in the Baltimore area here, with the amount of traffic that has, you know, developed because of this, the mass amount of, you know, building that they're doing in this area. They're really overdeveloping every part of maryland at least you know in the baltimore area it's getting ridiculous you know they're they're putting houses on top of houses and the infrastructure is just having a hell of a time handling it all and there's just so much more traffic now like now it's pretty much it, it's sad because now it's almost like normal traffic it's how rush hour used to be 10 years ago and now if you're in rush hour you're pretty much in gridlock 24 7 we're like freaking la and how it's ridiculous it never used to be that way but thankfully you know i feel really bad for you know people start you know learning how to drive now because it's it's tough like it is very tough to navigate this area because of how you know much traffic is it it is and how aggressive people drive around here Thankfully, I, you know, got my license and uh, learned to drive in a much more calm environment and uh, got my experience in. So now, you know, we're looking at 10 years later of me possessing a driver's license. Is it 10 years? Over 10 years. <laughs> Sorry, a little brain fart there. But that, uh, you know, I've definitely am comfortable driving with these morons but that doesn't mean they don't get to me it is really frustrating sometimes which actually that brings up another thing i want to talk about once i return back to the car i'm going to run in here to my local micro center and pick up a nintendo switch controller for a friend and I'll be back and we'll talk about uh, something that just kind of came on my mind after I said that. So uh, just one moment. All right, I am back. Not that it made much difference to you, but it took about 30 minutes of my time. Now I mentioned, you know, if you're driving around this area, you know, people drive aggressive and you know, it's just hectic around here, a lot of traffic. And with that said, the amount of traffic, you may want to pass someone or maybe you need to get over to take an exit, but you're blocked in by a bunch of slow cars or whatever. Uh, yeah, so that is a common problem here uh, driving in this area because of the amount of people who can't drive. And that leads me with one big issue with this car. Thankfully, in the SHO, because that engine produces so much, you know, butt thrusting torque, like pretty much at the you know beginning of the RPM range. So it's like even part throttle around 3000 RPM, you still have a crap ton of torque. And being all wheel drive, it would just shit and get. And it was a very confidence inspiring car. You know, if I had to jump in front of someone, even on the doing highway speeds, 
it took minimal effort to do so. Now with the Mustang, you're like, well, Kirk, it's a Mustang. I mean, it shouldn't be that bad. I mean, it's not, but the problem is where the power comes in at on this car compared to the SHO. See, now on the SHO, as said, it's all low-end torque. I mean, on a tuned SHO, you're probably looking at close to 500 pound-feet of, you know, torque. Like, definitely in the 400s at the wheels. That's a lot. That is a lot of torque, you know? So, when you need to move, you can do it. Albeit it's a heavy car, but it has the torque to move it along. This car, on the other hand, it makes a good amount of power stock, but that power doesn't come in until higher in the RPMs. This is pretty much, and, and this car actually has bad turbo lag. Like this feels like a turbo car. If you know, like in some ways that's a good thing, but when you really need power to get past someone or something, I mean, you know, it, it takes it a few seconds to, to build up some steam. And quite honestly, it's just not enough steam. I'd need more. That's the moral of the story here is I, I need more steam. And you know, the weird caveat to that is it's, you know, if this car is in any mode but normal mode, sport plus, definitely track mode in uh, drag, drag strip mode, any of those modes, really wakes this car up i swear like this thing is tuned to reserve like it changes the dynamics of this car car change completely when you change the modes and i don't know if it actually does change um the end the ecu strategy a little bit you know it, when you're in those other modes or what other than increasing throttle response but the problem with that is you know, most times I'm driving in normal mode and when I need power to pass someone, I'm not going to toggle the switch to put it in track mode, then slam my foot down so I can pass someone. No, I'm not. You know, I want to be able to just do it right there and then in the moment I need to do it. So that's kind of annoying and I get it, you know. Ford, I guess, didn't, you know, doesn't intend, you know, people to drive in track mode all the time, but in normal mode, the transmission shifts very slow and sluggishly. It just, it, it seems like it wants to hunt for gears. Like, this 10 speed's nice, but it's so much better, especially in this car, if you control what it does, because it kind of has a hard time deciding what it wants to do for itself. And that's one thing, you know, I've read that time and time again, but I've never actually owned a 10-speed car. Now, actually being in one, I see why they say that and why people can get frustrated with uh, this transmission. This transmission and this particular powertrain setup in general, this combination, uh, right now, I'm not super happy with it. Sadly, because I'm not planning to tune the car, I am not going to be able to experience any possible changes and shift uh shift points or anything so you know it is what it is it's still a fun car and like i said when you do put it in a different mode you know actually i've come to love just um putting it in drag mode and that's because i you know it sets the transmission for just like freaking crazy hard shifts and that to me is the most fun mode to be in and also, see, just like right there, like I was getting on the highway, I put my foot down, it took it a couple seconds to realize what I need to do, and then it got up, then it built power and got up to speed. And once I started moving, you know, it's good. Like, it, it moves along pretty good, but it's just, gah! <laughs> anyway, back to uh, drag straight mode. I found that to be the most fun to just kind of like drive around, especially um, in, in manual shifting mode with the paddle shifters because it, you know, the transmission shifts so hard that a lot of times I'll lose traction shifting into second gear or something, you know, full throttle. It's fun. It's the most dynamic setting in terms of how the car responds. 
and it's the it has the most characteristic I think I think it's definitely the best driving mode you know in this car to just have a little fun and zip around in uh, but as you know if you're just cruising around in normal mode you're kind of SOL if you really need to use some power and you know in most situations you don't but there are those situations where you need to get out of the way or get somewhere and if the car doesn't respond to your inputs the way you need them at the time you need them it can mess you up it can be frustrating and yeah so so I think that's gonna wrap it up here for this vlog uh, you know I do appreciate everyone that's watching my videos and subscribing I am in the last 100 subscribers before I get to my first subscriber milestone which is you know the magical 1000 number which you know then I can apply to be a, a YouTube partner or you know to apply for the YouTube partnership program and you know that's when I can start being earning a little bit of money from YouTube so almost there please thank you for watching and sharing and subscribing and all of that stuff you know how that works thank you so much and with that that is it for this video if you like the video please give it a thumbs up share it with everyone you know and if you want to see more content like this and go ahead subscribe to the channel keep a lookout for the next video